over at Lawson Dunes. This is in Haines City. Got this model house in the back of me from Meritage. I just want to kind of point out that they are building so fast over here. It's amazing. And please do always contact me first before you contact any home builder. When you contact the home builder first, you may avoid your or lose your paper by the builder realty representation. So it doesn't cost you anything to have me represent you throughout the process. So always keep that in mind. Home builders always do pay for it. It's use it or lose it. And it's like having a coupon for a free item at a store. You go to the store to purchase the item and you don't have the coupon. Well, you come home and then you realize, oh, geez, I could have had something for free along with it if I had that coupon. So that's kind of what it's like. Keep that in mind. Let's go inside and have a look. And again, I'm Rich Noto, Florida Licensed Realtor, Florida Licensed Home Inspector in Notary Republic, your construction trained realtor, which separates me from all the other realtors that don't have construction training. And let me tell you something along the way, you're going to you're going to need it. I fill the gaps where realtors that don't have construction training can't. You know, they can't help, they can't assist, they can't advise along the way. So just keep that in mind. Hibiscus, 1,988 square feet. Front door open. At richnotohomes.com, find the house you're looking for in Central Florida, Orlando, Kissimmee area. Are you interested in a full-time living residential house or a vacation home? investing in a rental income property, thinking about selling your home, look no further than richnotohomes.com. Dependable help from start to finish. Don't make a mistake along the way. Go to richnotohomes.com. All right, so the first impression of the hibiscus is that it feels spacious. It feels spacious and it feels kind of wide. So let's take a look over to the left. See what we see. Got a bedroom here. I'll come back to that. Got the standard full bathroom. So the closet kind of stops right about over here somewhere. And the bedroom is actually a pretty large one because you could see that there's furniture there. Furniture there, I mean, it's kind of small, but there's something over there. Looks kind of like a gun safe. <laughs> um, and then over here is a piece of furniture as well. So that'll give you kind of some idea of the space. You know, usually builders don't put too many pieces of furniture in smaller rooms so and again another room which has three pieces of furniture oh look at this I got a walk-in closet how nice very nice very nice take a right over here and see what we see. Oop. That's the sales office. And here's a full bathroom and another bedroom. So we're on the third bedroom towards the front of the house. Let's take a look at this closet.
and the laundry room. Let's see what type of kitchen we have. Oh, this is nice. Look at this. So your kitchen and your living room and your dining area. Yeah, so pretty standard size kitchen with a with an island that's kind of like, you know, average size island. Not the smallest, definitely not the largest. And you can see over here you got a you got some pavers and there's no rear patio and eye area. Now I don't know if that's something that can be added or that there's an option in a floor plan for something like that or not. So that's always something to keep in mind. But you know, those are the kind of things that you always ask anyway. And I always go through stuff like that with builders when I help my customers. In addition to trying to get them the best deal and the best discount, there's a lot of questions to ask. And when you're in the business, you know the questions that you should be asking. Not that everybody does, but you know, I do. Let me put it to you that way. So this is Meritage. And these homes are much more energy efficient how they build. I'm gonna extend the, I'm trying to extend it. Let's extend that stick. Okay, let's go up here. Have a look. Okay. So spray foam. See the you can see the spray foam, you probably can't hear me. Okay, so you can see up there that they used spray foam and attached it to the roof. So they attach it to the roof decking and um you know, that's a lot cleaner than the loose insulation, the blown insulation, which just makes a lot of dust. And, you know, that dust at some point might somehow come into the house through any like open uh, penetrations or, or wind or whatever. So, you know, that's just something to keep in mind. All right, so let's continue. What do we have? Master bedroom. So, this house being pretty close to uh, 1,900 square feet, you know, it's nicely divided up. You could say that there's some good, good space around this, this bed, no doubt about that. And this master bedroom closet is fantastic. Look at that. But the best room right here, toilet in the closet room. And here's your shower, pretty standard size shower. It's definitely not the smallest, but kind of like average, I guess you could say. So let's go in the closet. Let's do the closet cam thing. I'll kind of show you how how wide this is. So the camera is kind of, it's close to the wall. I don't want to hit the wall with it, but if I, if I put out my arm, so let's see, that would be three. We're probably looking at, I don't know, what are we looking at? Seven, eight feet maybe in width. Um, let's see, going, going this way, let's try this. Plus my arm, I can't touch it. So arm's length is about six feet, maybe another three feet for the selfie stick. I don't know if we had another, uh, you know, two feet or so. So, you know, pretty long closet overall, especially for a house this size. All right, so let's talk about this house as I walk out. I think that this is a really nice floor plan. And I'm gonna tell you why. I like that you have a large storage space over here. Sometimes when they, 
you know, do the closet with like the folding door and the bathroom. You know, those are smaller. Well, but here you just, you know, you have all this space. So if you wanted to put up some kind of a door or something to kind of, you know, hide this after you moved in, you know, you could do that. But if not, you have this big open area where you could just, you know, put whatever you want. Of course, this closet, I mean, for most people, I think that this is going to be plenty of, plenty of space. Especially if like you're only one person. If you're one person, you know, you could probably turn this into like storage for other stuff too. This bedroom, I mean, it's fantastic, you know, for the square footage. I, you know, to me, it looks great. Um, this bedroom looks great, you know, based on the square footage. The living room and the dining room are, you know, potentially a little bit smaller than in some other homes, but these bedrooms are larger and you're getting an extra bedroom as well because this is a four bedroom. It's not a three bedroom, but you know, how much space do you need? That's something that, you know, is up to you. Only you could answer that. Me personally, you know, this would be plenty. I would rather have an extra bedroom than have a larger uh, living room. The laundry room, it's pretty standard. You know, it's not too small or anything like that. Um, but, you know, again, you know, you, you know, you have these bedrooms. And then also, you know, you have three bathrooms. So you have three toilets, you've got three bathtubs that you can shower in. And, um, you know, a lot of these rooms, like this room, this room has a walk-in closet. So if somebody's coming to live with you and that person isn't the owner of the house, you know, this would be a great room to give them. And what I mean by somebody coming to live with you is that, you know, maybe a family member that's older, um, you know, they could have, you know, a small walk-in closet. So, you know, I think that that's nice. So yeah, so, you know, great house. Um, you know, the floor plan is pretty well balanced. Overall, uh, you know, I do like to see that. It's nice to, it's nice to see when we're gonna step up, we'll go through here. It's nice to see floor plans that are well balanced compared to, you know, floor plans sometimes where I feel like, you know, there's too much, there's too much in the kitchen or there's too much, you know, in the living room or something like that, so. You know, just something to uh, keep in mind. I'm gonna walk over and make another video of a model while I'm here. It's starting to get hot. Today started off cooler. It's getting real hot now. The sun is, the sun is cooking. I'm thinking about my other shirts, the ones without the sleeves, the good ones, the ones that smart people wear when it's too hot. <laughs> because in addition to that, I always have all the stuff that's loaded up in my pockets, like extra batteries, extra cameras. Uh, you know, the normal stuff, keys, wallets, all kind of stuff that, you know, bogs me down in the heat. So, let's see what we see. Prior to being a realtor, I purchased a house without a realtor and then with a realtor who had no construction training, no construction certification. And I can tell you that it's extremely important to have a realtor with construction certification. Here's how to get my service paid for by the builder free to you. Please contact me first before you contact any home builder. When you contact the home builder first, you may lose your paid for by the builder realtor representation. If you email them, call them, text them, go to the sales office, walk the models, anything that they can match up at the time of contract, they may say you cannot use a realtor. Please don't contact the builder and ask what their policies are either because that would be your first contact. You see how this works? When I went to purchase my first house, I was given terrible advice. Everybody told me I had to pay for a realtor, which is just not true. I had no realtor and it was terrible. From start to finish, it was exhausting. I was treated poorly at sales offices and after I signed my contract, the salesperson basically vanished on me. It was just a terrible experience. When I purchased my second house, House, I knew I needed a realtor, so I started searching. I encountered top sellers who seemed impressive, but they were just high pressure sales. They were telling me to go to the builder, tell them I'm your realtor. When you pick out the house you want, contact me, 
and I'll come down and help you. They would show me two homes, three homes, ask me which one do I want to buy. Many of them couldn't even respond properly to an email, which is much like when I help my buyers to find resale homes. Many of the realtors that are selling these homes, it's like they don't even read what you wrote. So my realtor ended up being a new realtor. He was loyal. He went with me to like 20 builders that I picked out. He wasn't selling me out to sales associates. He wasn't selling me out to other realtors. He wasn't selling me out to resale home sellers. He was no doubt on my side. So like most realtors, the realtor that I picked had no construction training, no certification. At the time, I didn't even consider it. As we went from house to house with new construction, with resales, there were times I had questions and he didn't know or he was kind of guessing and he would at least tell me he's just guessing. The information that I received was incorrect. I realized that home inspectors are there to look over a house and find issues with them. But let's face it, the home inspector is with you for two hours, three hours looking at the house that you're interested in buying. Your realtor is with you, if the realtor is a good realtor, for potentially six months, 12 months while a new construction house is being built. Your realtor is going to be the one that's going to be there with you when you're dealing with rude, obnoxious construction managers that are lying to you when the home is built incorrectly and they just want you to just go away. They want you to just sign, say the house is okay, or it's going to be passed off the warranty, and that's it. So having a realtor without construction background is not a good idea. And if I was going to be buying a house in another state, even though I have a home inspector's license and I am trained, I would still want to find a realtor that is construction trained because the more eyes, the better. Everybody's going to spot something different. I would even potentially hire two inspection companies or maybe more to look over a house. Just some quick tips, just want you to understand that. I believe in a comprehensive realtor service where I could answer and guide and look at home inspection reports and have an understanding of what's going on and how to help my buyers best. Thanks for watching this. Back to the video. Mm -hmm.